All right. So now we're going to actually jump more into the complete picture, the, the Bayes theorem. So it, the, the objective again for this presentation is to get, get a basic understanding of Bayes theorem you know, for, that we use for flow frequency. So you're going to see this multiple times here. We're going to see it in a couple other lectures. You're going to see it in the multiple workshops. So the idea is to hopefully really kind of burn this in. Um, and, and understand it. Hopefully, as you see it more and more, it won't be, uh, maybe it won't sound intimidating or it won't be as intimidating. And one thing that you hopefully will realize is based on the way it works is kind of how we naturally think. So hopefully it's going to make sense as you see it. So in this presentation, we'll also learn a little more about the, we're going to go through some of the terminologies and we'll look at some more probability statistics that kind of make this up. Um, and then, uh, and then we're going to look more like how it just how it solves. We're just going to kind of break down the Bayes theorem probabilities again, how the probability basics kind of define it, and we're, we're going to look more into it. So, all right. So, what is Bayes theorem? So, the first thing you might this might surprise you, might not. Um, it's been around for over two centuries. So it was developed back in the I think the seventeen late seventeen hundreds. Um, so it's been around a long time. It's not something new to mathematics. Um, and it was actually the preferred method way back when, and then preferred method switched. But anyway, like we have the computing capacity to do this. This is the more efficient way of solving some analytics. But it's been around for two, like I said, over two, two centuries. So, but, so Bayes provides a way to update our beliefs with new relevant um, pieces of evidence. Um, it gives the probability of an event based on new information, um, or that may be, or that that may be, you know, it's a related that might be related to your event. Um, one way to think about it, it's kind of like the mathematical rule that describes how it's a mathematical rule that describes how to update your belief, your understanding of something, given new evidence or new beliefs, basically. One way of thinking about it, this is a mathematical rule that describes how you, the art of learning, like that's what it's doing. It's it's taking some information that you have, some other prior information, and then it's giving you something new based on that new evidence or that, that new prior information, that new data. So it's it's basically a mathematical art of learning. So let's go through some of the terminologies. You've been hearing these, so we want to kind of burn these in and get this down. So we've got prior probability, or just priors. So this information, or so this is information or prior knowledge we have about a model before we've done any kind of analysis. So we'll use the dice a lot of times. So think about a six-sided dice. You know um, or have prior information, right? That six-sided dice has six sides, right? So you have prior beliefs about what, what that looks like. So given that prior belief about a die that has six, die, six sides, what is, how does that inform, what do you expect the posterior distribution of that to be, given your prior knowledge of equal weighted sides? It's like a one in six for each number or a uniform flat distribution of one of six for each number, right? So given your prior knowledge of even distribution of each number of the die, your posterior distribution is a uniform distribution one and six. Now, what happens if you find out that um, it's a way to die prior to? So now, whatever you want to think, like if you know that the die is now weighted, you would not expect the posterior distribution to be uniform anymore. You'd expect some different kind of distribution. So your the the base theorem concept is you have some data, you have some prior information and that if that total gives you a new belief, a new posterior distribution. So that is what we're doing with Bayes. It's again like I said, it's the art of learning. You're taking information you have, you're taking a little bit of knowledge about it and you get a new belief, a new knowledge, a new a new prior distribution given that. All right. So Posterior probability, that's kind of what we've been talking about here. This is, um, this is updated probability after the evidence or prior beliefs are considered. So again, with the die, the prior distribution may look 
like a uniform distribution. However, after applying the weights, uh, the posterior distribution you know, will be informed by that prior knowledge and take a different shape. So we talked about likelihood a lot in the previous lecture. That's what the previous lecture was. But um, again, it's the probability of the evidence or probability of the data given the, the model, given that it's, the model is true. So the probability of data uh, given, the, given the model. So then we have marginal probability, kind of back to the original basics of probability. So this is the belief mentioned in the, you know, <laughs> we mentioned this briefly. So in Bayes' theorem, this is the denominator. So in the equation that is the probability of evidence under any, so this is, sorry, the denominator is the equation that the probability of the evidence under any circumstance is true. So this is called our normalizing constant. It's the constant that makes the posterior density function integrate to one. But again, one thing to remember that the normalizing constant doesn't actually have to sum to one. And you'll see that in the spreadsheets. It integrates the posterior dish, the PDF to one, but the normalizing constant does not have to equal one. Um, so just to bring that back to flight frequency, this just means that we're looking at the total likelihood of the data given all the probability distributions. So not just one sample of LB3, but say all thousand or 10,000. So we're looking at the total probability. And yeah, trying to make sure this is, slides here. So, okay. So at best fit, we have very similar terminology, some slightly different. So just kind of want to walk through and make sure you understand it. Like if you read the Bayesian, if you see it in best fit, or if you read the, the best fit manuals that you have kind of the terminologies down. So, um, sorry, this animation is a little bit, it was supposed to pop up one at a time, but we'll just deal with the full slide of numbers at the point. So, <laughs> so we've talked about the data, of course, um, quite a bit. We've, it's what we refer to it as systematic historical intervals and perception thresholds. Um, and then we've got priors and best fit. So priors and best fit defi are defined, they define our prior knowledge, again, about the a parameter of the model. So the so prior knowledge about a parameter would be like a regional skew. So we know something about the regional skew other than the just uniform flat prior that's by default. So that's prior information. Another one is if we know prior information at a certain quantile or AEP, annual exceedance probability, when most of the time we inform that with uh, precipitation frequency rainfall runoff results. So what we know is we can run enough, we can run a bunch of results at the 100 year um, and we can get a flow range that informs what, what that prior, that prior, that flow range tells us prior information about what the, LP3 should look like through that particular quantile. So those are our two types of priors. Of course, we have likelihood. It's always called likelihood through here. It's kind of a critical part of the equation. Um, and we've kind of covered that quite a bit at this point. So likelihood again determines the probability of the data uh, given the, the theta. So the data that came from the, the parent probability distribution. So, and then we have the posterior distribution. So this is a combination of the likelihood and the prior knowledge that tells us the new belief about the model. So it's the probability of the parameter distribution given the data for best fit um, out of the posterior distribution. So out of when we run our final 10,000 LP3, our posterior distributions, that's where we get our posterior, we find our most likely posterior mode, we get our predictive, posterior predictive, and we get our credible intervals. So, and real quick, the posterior mode, we're going to cover that, and hopefully you have this down. It's our most likely estimate from the parameters. So again, what is the most likely, the least negative log likelihood of our LP3 parameters? We have posterior predictive, which is our average or expected probability. Again, this is what accounts for the uncertainty in our model or parameter distribution. So, and then we have credible intervals, which is defined by a uh, probability range, but the true answer lies within. So most of the time we define this as our 90th credible intervals, or that's our 95th and 5th credible limits. So that just basically means that the true answer lies within that 90% credible interval. So, all right, back to the, a little bit back to our probability basics to help us kind of break down the, the Bayesian theorem. 
So suppose that the probability of A given B is known, but the probability of B given A is not known. So then that means that the joint probability for that probability of B given A times the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B, right? You just see the flip, right? One equals the other. So the nice thing about this is then we can divide both sides by the, the probability of A, and it basically simplifies our function, right? We're just, it's just a substitution. And so now we end up, by doing those substitutions, we end up with this probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B divided by the probability of A. So it's base theorem is basically a joint probability divided by a marginal probability. So joint probability is conditional times marginal, so divide by marginal. We'll, we'll, get a little, we'll get a little more detailed here and bring this back to our parameters. But this is your basic base theorem equation. So now let's bring this back. Um, uh, bring this back up. So again, this is more or less what we, <clears throat> as simple as you see here, it's, it really is just a joint probability divided by a marginal. Um, and I just, I think this slide is really more here for your re reference. So you have the definitions of each individual part. So just, you can come back for reference. So you have like what the probabilities are, just a quick reference to what the whole equation is, but all right, so let's look at the classical form again here. So, but let's put the parameters into terms that make more sense to us. So hopefully it makes more sense to us. Um, B in this equation is our model. It's our LP3, it's our theta, okay? So in this equation, it's the B is our theta or distribution. A is our data, X. So when you put substitute those out, now you, Hopefully this looks a little better. You've got the probability of the data given theta. So again, probability of each of our data, systematic data, each year, or historical intervals, given the LP3 you're looking at, times um, the probability of theta. So that's our priors. Probability of theta is uh, prior information we know about the model. So do we know something about the regional skew, the skew of LP3? So that's incorporated in that probability of theta, all divided by the probability of x. So the mar marginal probability of x in the denominator is the, the accumulation of the total probability of x, the data, of course, given all the parameter distributions. So this is actually found using the total probability theorem, a law of total, total probability. So when you take that law of total probability, you write that out as in the denominator, you end up with this equation here. So this form of Bayes theorem, that's what we'll be covering for the rest of the lectures. That's what you're gonna see in the spreadsheets. So and just remember, we know, what this, we know what the X is here, and we know what the theta is. It's just mathematically just working through it, doing the additions and dividing by the total of the, the normalizing constant, that total. So I, it looks intimidating, but it's really not too bad. Uh, hopefully you'll see that when we work through the spreadsheets. But let's look at it just again, just to hopefully hammer it in a little more. So this first piece, so again, we're talking three pieces to the base theorem. We have this first one, the, the probability of x given theta, that's our likelihood, right? So that's our systematic historical and perception thresholds. Um, then we have the second part of the numerator, that's our prior knowledge, like regional, that's informed usually with, say, regional skew or precipitation frequency runoff, rainfall runoff. Um, then we have the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, then we have the normalizing constant um, that gives, that gives us the sum of the total likelihood of the input data given all the probabilities. And so given the likelihood data, uh, the prior knowledge, our normalizing constants, we solve that posterior probability distribution given the data. With this information, we know now what the posterior mode is. We know um, we can calculate the predictive, uh, predictive curve and the credible intervals. So again, just to emphasize, it's, it's really just the three pieces, our likelihood, our prior information, and then the total of 
um, all of our likelihood of given the data. So <laughs> hopefully that's, that's all this really to this lecture. So we, we just really wanted to, at first right now, just try to get into Bayes' theorem, break it down, how we get to this final equation, kind of define what it's doing. And I, hopefully it, it, you're going to see it a lot more, but hopefully start to shake out like it's not too bad. It's not too intimidating what the actually the data is because again, we know what the data is. You know your input data. You know your model. It's just a matter of working through the math and letting. Uh, there is a little bit of. We'll get to a, a lecture later on for the normalizing constant, how we actually sample and sort through and get the samples. But once, if you have samples, then you can add up the total likelihood of all your data given, all your parameter sets. And then you have everything you need to solve the posterior distribution. All right, so we define Bayes. We've given we've kind of gone over a few of the terminologies that, that are basic and towards uh, their their primary turn for best fit, and and, and we just kind of talk generally about what best fit is, or Bayes theorem is. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully. You can digest some of that. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. 